Hi and welcome to another episode of Peacemake TV. In today's WordPress tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at another feature inside Slider Revolution. We're going to be taking a look at how we can create a simple parallax effect to give the effect of a three dimension in our sliders. Now, the example I'm going to use is not going to be the most interesting, but what it's going to do is it's going to show you the fundamental techniques that are used to create this quite cool effect. So let's take a look at how we can do that. So I'm in Slider Revolution and I've got the latest version installed, which is 5.1. And if you take a look on the right hand side where all the options are available to us, you can see one of the options we have is Parallax and 3D. If I click and expand that, you'll find that the first option is Enable Parallax Stroke 3D. Now by default, this is going to be turned off. So I'd advise you the first thing you want to do is come into this setting, check that to be on, and then just hit Save to update those settings. Also, you make any other changes you may want throughout the normal general settings and layouts and so on. But for now, I've done all that. I'm just switching the parallax effect on. So what I can do now is I can come to the slide editor and I can start editing the slide that I've previously created. Now, as you can see, I currently have three slides, the third one being blank. And that's the one we're going to take a look at working on to create our parallax effect. So I'm going to click just to enable that. That'll load that in for us. And uh, we're coming out to the actual slider area. Now, you're going to find that if you've been working on an earlier version prior to 5.1, that the interface has changed ever so slightly. You'll find now that the add layer options are no longer on the left hand side where you can click and select the layers. We've now got an add layer button that's part of the actual interface itself, as are the several different icons you'd see when you selected a layer inside the slider revolution. So they've kind of streamlined the interface uh, just a, a little bit more in this revision. And we'll take a look at some of the other changes in a future video, but for now, we're just going to concentrate on the parallax effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a couple of layers. Now, the first thing I want to do is explain exactly what this parallax effect is intended to do. If you imagine that when you were stood in the normal 3D world, when you stand near an object that's close to you, if you move your head, that will move at a slightly different rate to the objects that are sitting further away from you. So in other words, as you say, for example, peer around a lamppost, you're going to find that your perception of the background changes based upon the angle you look at that particular object. So each, should we say, layer within the environment will move at a slightly different rate based upon your sort of pivot point, the position you're looking at. So what we're going to do with this parallax effect is create a similar effect. So we're going to create a simple background. We're going to put a couple of lampposts in there. And we're going to pretend as we move our mouse pointer, which will emulate our sort of head position, that the objects closest to us will move slower than the objects further away. It might seem a bit uh, weird to understand the concept. But when you see it in practice, you'll kind of get an example of what I mean. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create what I'm going to consider with my background layer. So I'm just going to click to add a layer. I'm going to come down, choose an image. Um, I've uploaded uh, a photograph, which I'm going to use and insert that into our slider. I'm going to position this where I want. So this is effectively going to be our background. Then I'm going to bring in a couple of additional layers. So all I'm going to do is click to add a new layer, another image. I'm going to bring this lamppost in. Now, the only thing to consider with this very badly cut out lamppost is that we're dealing with 24 bit PNG files because that allows us to create transparency. And if we need shadows and things like that, we can apply that within that PNG. So just remember that the object you're putting in there has to have a transparent background. So I'm going to just set that up. I'm going to duplicate that two times. So I've got three lampposts. And I'm going to roughly position these where I want them within my scene. OK, so if we come down, you see the timeline all pretty self-explanatory. If you need to reorder any of these, you can simply just use the drag and drop functionality of each of these layers. But we put it in the order that we want, so that'll be fine. So all I need to do now is start actually applying this parallax effect to it. Now, what we can do is we can control the speed that any of these layers will actually move at. So if we come over to the parallax 3D tab and we select any object in our scene, including what will be our background, we can come and specify the parallax depth. So in this example, I want the background to be the area that moves the most. 
Now, don't worry, our three lampposts haven't disappeared. It's just the way that uh, slider revolution works, that when you select a layer that's behind, it will automatically pop that to the front so you can work on it without the distractions of the things in front of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the parallax effect on this to be an over-exaggerated 12%. I'll switch through to my lampposts and select the first one. I'm going to check the parallax to be 4% and I'll do the same for the second one and the same for the third one. So now if I save that and we preview it, we we'll get an indication of what this effect is like. So we just click the preview option, wait for that to load up. And now you can see our three lampposts and our background are all in place. Now if I take my mouse over this, you can see that the objects now start to move in relation to my mouse movement. So as you can see, because we set the parallax effect for the background to be quicker, in other words, it's going to move more than we did with the foreground objects, as we sort of pivot our head around, it looks like everything moves at a different rate to give us a sense of depth. Now, this isn't a particularly brilliant example, and you could deal with you know, sort of more comprehensive examples where you've got multiple layers in exactly the same way. But what this is going to show you is just fundamentally how the parallax effect works. So let's just overemphasize that even more. Let's just close that down, and we'll just come up and we'll just increase this effect just to give you a, a sort of more obvious indication of what's going on. So we'll save this, come back over to our preview, let that load in, and now as we move it, you can see the background moves even more so. So that really is the basics of dealing with the parallax effect, and you can get really creative with this if you want to create some really cool sense of depth. You could easily create a street view, for example, where you've got a post box and then you've got people walking behind it. And then behind that, you've got buildings in the sort of the mid ground. And then behind that, you've got the sky. And each one of those can be moving at a different pace. The closest ones to you at the sort of smallest amount, the ones further afield, larger amount. And that's going to give you a real sense of depth. Well, I hope you found this introduction to working with the parallax effect in slide, inside Slider Revolution 5.1 interesting. I hope you found it informative. I hope we give you some good ideas. If you have, please give the video a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. Uh, if you'd like to be kept up to date with all the latest additions to the uh, WordPress channel, just simply hit the subscribe button below and be notified every time there's a new video. And if you've got any comments or feedback or suggestions on future videos, please pop those in the comment section below. Until next time, take care.